welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about multiplex PCR this is one type of PCR variety multiplex PCR is carried out to perform multiple PCR reactions using a single PCR mix now what do we mean by PCR mix let me take a color here PCR mix is all the reaction solution and molecules that are required for a PCR process to continue. It, can, it, it includes uh, the polymerase enzyme, it includes the target DNA to be amplified, it includes all the primers. Now normally in single PCR reactions, we use one target DNA which we will amplify. We use two primers, two set of this, one set of these primers for, for the amplification process and we use a polymerase which is stack polymerase. In multiplex PCR, the idea is to amplify different types of target DNA in the same reaction center, in the same reaction mixture. So for that, we use multiple uh, DNA, we use more than two set of, more than one set of primer, we use more target DNA and we use uh, higher concentration of the TAC polymerase or any other sort of polymerase enzyme. So the principle for multiplex PCR is the detection of more than one template in the mixture by addition of more than one set of oligonucleotide primers. Now one thing is very important about the multiplex PCR is it is fast that you don't need to do the reactions separately for each of them. You can do that in combined fashion in one specific PCR tube. But the problem is as we involve so many varieties of primers together there is a high chance of cross binding of the primers so cross amplification and also formation of primer dimer and also the formation of unwanted PCR products but if you can minimize that rest of the process are kind of uh, important and it's good feature so what we do in this case we start with the first thing that is uh, that is using different sources of the target DNA let's say in this case we use three different sources of target DNA Written, named as replicon because that's what we want to replicate so those is known as replicon replicon 1 with green color replicon 2 with blue color and replicon 3 which is red color now in this mixture let's say we don't have replicon 3 present at all we have replicon 1 and 2 now let's say we have the mixture coming from a source but we don't know what type of plasmid DNA exactly present but we do know the sequence of the gene so we, we can make a primer or synthesize a primer based on that now using that idea we can actually understand what kind of target DNA is present in that mixture now what we can do is we make the product out of it then what we use we use different primer extension strategy with the, with the polymerization process with different polymers once we do the polymerization process then we also e add some sort of uh, luminex beads that will give us or emit some coloration or give us emit some light or provide some color that will ultimately give us the idea about the type of replicon that we are dealing with the type of replicon that we produce for example as we have replicon 1 and 2 are present in this case the color for uh, the bead that we attach to the replicon 1 gives the green color the bead that is attached to the replicon 2 it will give us a blue color and for 3 should give us the red color but in this case as we don't have any target DNA present for the replicon number 3 we won't get any red coloration from this reaction mixture we will get a color green and a blue which we can easily detect with a detector and once we detect those colorations we can easily uh, put those values uh, in, a, in a monitor in a, in a computer screen to get, get a graph out of that so if you see here the curve for the results for different sorts of target DNA one of which is not present we will see specific graph presenting and telling us the quantity of the DNA that is amplified the graph will be related with both this the number of cycle as well as the quantity of the degree of uh, the, the degree of light that, that the detector is receiving and that's how we get this kind of curves that is going to tell us about the story of amplification now if one of those fragment fail to amplify we won't see any graph for that we won't see any uh, light or uh, or color change for that specific target that will also help us to identify 
which DNA fragment is not present or if there is any problem or, or problem during the process of PCR reaction. So it kinds of very useful to understand and do the same thing uh, at the same time, all those different stuff in the same time in a, in a, in a PCR tube. So it saves some time but again uh, you need to be very careful about choosing the primers and about designing the pi primers be because if there is an issue with the designing of primers they can uh, self anneal or they can anneal to the wrong places that will be difficult. So that in a sense is uh, the multiplex PCR. If you like this video please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that. Thank you very much.